The Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre is a unique blend of industry, government and research partners who come together delivering applied research for Australian industry. This CRC is a national effort. It's a key enabler for carbon reductions in buildings and cities. Construction techniques haven't changed much since the time of the Egyptians or medieval bricklayers. Even today, we just put one brick on top of the other. But there is a different way. So we've done some research in this new area, uh, funded by the SBE and the CRC in Low Carbon Living. And we think we've got some pretty exciting results to share. So I'll hand over to the team. The prefabricated and modular building sector represents about 3% of the building that happens in Australia every year. That's actually a very small number when you look at other countries like Japan where the majority of construction is actually modular. But modular could have a much bigger future here because the growth rate and uptake of modular is growing and that's a function of a number of reasons. One is modular can be constructed very fast. The times are anywhere between 35 and 40 percent faster than conventional building and if you've got a lot of demand in the marketplace modular allows you to respond to that demand very rapidly when compared against conventional construction methods. Looking at the Perth skyline now there aren't any modular buildings to see but in 2014 the first modular building was constructed in Coburn Central. The building behind me is called the Dara Apartments. It's a modular construction, 77 apartments over six storeys. It's taken about 12 months to build, a little bit under which is great and um, by using the modular construction we've got a whole range of benefits, particularly in the reduction of time it's taken to build the building. It was a site we effectively were joint venture partners in. We were shareholders in the company that owned it. Um, we were looking for greater density on this site, so it was a good site in which to experiment on. It's close to a train station, it's next to a shopping centre. It had lots of advantages in terms of affordable housing as a site. The department's looking at ways to innovate to try and reduce the cost to make housing more affordable. And Modular provided a whole series of options, particularly in terms of the cost, in terms of funding debt, and the period of peak debt. So we were interested in experimenting with it and see what advantages the technology actually delivered. Look, I think it's got significant potential going forward. Multi-storey construction in Perth is quite expensive. The challenge will be to actually maximise the benefits. It's fundamentally a logistics exercise first and foremost. And uh, improving on those all the time will be the challenge and getting the design of the units to maximise the potential of the modular format will be the other real challenge going forward. We made a couple of conscious decisions in building this building, so there was virtually no attempt, well there was no attempt to sell lots off the plan. Perth people like to see and touch things before they buy them, and I think we've sold nearly half of them already and we don't quite have a certificate of occupancy yet. We're currently acquiring sites near train stations with a view to building modular apartments basically sitting next to train stations so we can provide people with not just affordable housing but more affordable living in reducing their costs of getting to work and, and doing those sorts of things. There are a range of lessons we've learnt that we need to take forward mm -hmm. but we'd hope in the next couple of years to probably build another five or six of these modular apartments around Perth. Look, I think at the moment there's a limited range of suppliers of modular product and that's a challenge. Um, hopefully over the next few years we'll see an expanded range of providers which gives us more opportunity to reduce the cost. Um, when there's only one or two providers you're paying a premium into the market, um, we think there'll be a significant reduction in cost of modular apartments over the next couple of years and that's where we see the real benefit going forward. In Perth we build around 22,000 homes a year. And the affordable ones tend to be on the outskirts of Perth, project homes built in estates. This means that they're spending nearly as much on transportation as they are on their mortgages. And so it's not really an affordable proposition. But if people want to say, look at buying an apartment, apartments in Perth are currently very expensive and unaffordable. And so there's not really a lot of choice out there. I think what Modular could offer is a more affordable um, housing type that's still very high quality but is able to um, actually construct a building more cheaply and also uh, faster so that people aren't having to rent and pay a mortgage um, on the house that they're constructing at the same time for as long. We built our first house in this factory and shipped it to Caratha. 
the big thing in the Perth metropolitan market is to get people to accept non-double brick constructed homes. So we did it with a project of 10, our next project is one of 26 and we hope to implement a third project with 80. Yeah, it's all been driven by affordability really, that's the number one driver. There's a number of features that go to the affordability. There's essentially, the biggest single one is the time value of money. Because you can build these houses in 10 weeks instead of 10 months. Because we're working in a factory, you can turn the lights on, you can work shift work, you can work through the night, you can work through hot and cold and inclement weather. So if it rains, it really doesn't matter here. We're also moving away from a lot of the wet trades like bricklaying, plastering. These are all time consuming. Of course, you've got to then get the, the house on site and uh, you know plumbed up and wired up. But uh, certainly a significant reduction than what we're seeing at the moment. Also some added efficiencies around theft on site. You know, because we're, we're building these in a controlled environment, you know, theft is not an issue, vandalism is not an issue. So, you know, there's a, there's a number of synergies that just lend themselves to building these homes inside a factory. First of all, you get a lot less waste. So you're not carting stuff away to the dump. It's much easier to recycle. And we use uh, plasterboard instead of float and set cementitious and plaster type materials on the walls. And they, they, are, they are quite wasteful in some respects. Whereas the plasterboard, uh, you know, we can get the right cuts out of the sheet, but we can also send the plasterboard back to the factory just over here and, uh, and recycle it through the process. So that's one area. The second area is um, you can get the thermal efficiencies, you know, the, the ratings. Uh, it's, it's essentially about um, the right amount of insulation in the right places. So, you know, that's a lot easy to do. You can also get some really cool uh, design elements like the uh, rake ceilings. A lot of these houses that you, you can see in the background, um, they're essentially a first home by a house. And you would normally only just get the traditional flat ceilings, which is, you know, um, you know, 27 courses or so of brickwork. But in these houses, they've got rake ceilings in the family area, which I, I don't know exactly how high it goes, but it goes up on the rake. It really opens the house up and gives people a real sense of a bit of space. And because a first home buyer, they do have some constraints on the size of the home. The smaller it is, if you can just raise the ceilings and get a bit more elevated space, they do get a much greater sense of space and uh, you know that, that just creates a whole new feel. We're trying to borrow from some of the other industries like the car manufacturer where you know people can almost test drive a house, you know, see it getting built in a factory, maybe come and visit it several times, that sort of stuff. We're really trying to think about a whole brave new world of, of you know how housing might work out. The three main benefits to modular building is that it costs less it takes less time and the sustainability performance is superior to a conventional building. Modular provides some real cost benefits compared to conventional construction as well as the time cost associated with that. You know, time is money in the building game so we're, we're finding us particularly in high-rise construction we, the construction program is, is most of the time less than 50% of conventional construction so a big chunk of a, of a build program is, is the prelims associated with this type of stuff. It's, it's cranes on site, it's site supervision, it's fencing, it's scaffolding, it's all of those type of things. With modular construction, you're, you're working in a parallel construction program. So while site activity is happening, you're in the ground and you're building podiums and things like that. At the same time, the, the balance of the building is being built in a factory. So we talk about modular construction programs being 50% of the time. What that translates to for an overall construction program is probably only about a 30% savings because it takes a little bit longer to get out of the ground with modular construction. With conventional construction we tend to design enough to get the building out of the ground and then resolve more building and more design as we go along with that building. With modular it's, it's pretty much got to be rivet perfect. What excites us about modular is it's a, it's a far more sustainable way of building in terms of thermally they outperform conventional construction, embodied energy, all the things that are important like that, but as well as the fact of, of it's just it's a predominantly a recyclable building as opposed to a concrete structure which is just one big heat sink that in time gets blown up and, and turned into landfill. We tend to use recyclable materials, it's steel, it's a, it can be put into perpetual service, pull that building apart. Uh, recycle the steel and, and uh, put that material into perpetual service so it can be used on you know, projects for longevity. 
the majority of hotels that are being built uh, will probably be built in modular, uh, given that through conventional construction, they're just not getting there. In a conventional construction, you're close to about $200,000 per key for a hotel. It just doesn't stack up financially there. With modular, we're finding we, we, we've, those prices are coming in anywhere between sort of $120,000 and $140,000 a key, so it's enabling the project to go ahead. The part of the market we see is the most exciting uh, the, and, and most sustainable and one, the one with the most longevity is around the, um, the multi-res but in the affordable space. So there's, there's a lot of projects there where you know, there's, there's real stresses around public housing and, and just affordable housing and rent pressures in, in Perth. And they, yet again, I always say it comes back to a project has a financial trigger to make it work. So if we can drive that cost down, that, that should in turn allow landlords to get the same returns you know, as a percentage but at a much lower rent and, and things like that. So from a CIMC point of view, that's what we're most excited about. Not just the fact that it, it's going to turn into revenue for us, but it's you know, we all like to think we're out here to change the world and, and we think that's where we can make the biggest impact. Historically, when we've thought of um, modular buildings, we think of dongers from the mining industry. But increasingly, modular construction is um, quite high design and there's some really gorgeous buildings. And the buildings that will be constructed in Perth over the next couple of years are going to be really gorgeous buildings that improve and contribute positively to our cityscape. It's a small boutique hotel. It's stage one of a two-stage program. It consists of 37 rooms that were built in modular construction offshore in a factory in Thailand and brought down by ship and uh, erected on site here in Fremantle. One of the spectacular um, time frame benefits that we got was that uh, four storeys were erected in four days. Basically it came off a ship on the Sunday and then by the Thursday uh, the, the entire hotel was erected, uh, which was one of the, the huge benefits, then connecting up the services internally, but that was all done, you know, obviously more safely than if people were working at height and, and those things. The rooms sort of emulate, say, a cabin of a ship, and because of the modularisation as well, we could build in a lot of luxury um, that might not be possible in in situ with labour rates as they are in Western Australia at the moment and, and materials as well. It was one of the things we were very passionate about, making sure that the rooms performed um, you know, above expectations and uh, certainly code expectations and we were, we were enabled to do that. One area particularly is because of the nature of having two walls and an air gap between rooms, the acoustics are very good and as a working port, containerisation is a part of any modern port and we were playing on the idea, even though these rooms are luxury rooms, bespoke, m not anything to do with containers, we thought that as an aesthetic we could bring some of that to bear on the facade. Anything that you can design of course can be built in this way. The real advantage is when you have benefits of scale, uh, multiples of a similar type. It gives you benefits of not having to sort of flatten out sites completely. Buildings can relate more subtly to the landscape. One of the things that we're not aware of yet, but in time, there's the ability to reuse um, buildings by actually lifting them up and you know, moving them to new sites, something that happens a lot more in America, for example. If we can harness the fact that by manufacturing off of a building site, you will get 50% savings in waste. You will get a 30% decrease in work health and safety incidents. You will produce a time span of probably less than 50% of traditional methodology. If you put all this together, you would conclude why aren't we producing manufactured housing at a greater rate? Demand for housing in Australia is about half a million in front of available stock. You cannot build half a million houses by traditional methodology. It is impossible. Therefore, this project, with this wonderful team that has spent the time recognising the challenges and hopefully some of the solutions.